Ja. السلام عليكم جميعا يعطيكم العافية إن شاء الله رح نبدأ اليوم موضوع جديد في الكربوهيدرات ميتابوليزم رح نحكي إن شاء الله تعالى عن الجلايكوجين ميتابوليزم طيب خليني أبدأ تسجيل تمام نعمل شير للفايل طيب يعطيكم العافية خلينا هيك نعمل شوية مراجعة سريعة لل يعني بشكل عام للكربوهيدرات ميتابوليزم قبل ما نبدأ في الجلايكوجين ميتابوليزم سو so. So far, we've discussed the uh, glycolysis or the breakdown of glucose to produce pyruvate uh, for the purpose of production of energy and then the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA so it can enter into the, the Krebs cycle to produce uh, and electron transport chain to produce a further amount of ATP. Um, so this is or the glucose is the main source of energy. So it's going to be relied on as the first source of energy. يعني لما جسمنا بحتاج طاقة for whatever purpose, we're going to break down glucose to produce energy. And whenever we don't have glucose, we may rely on other sources. Okay? So now, if I have excess glucose, for example, after a, a, a carbohydrate-rich diet, uh, what would happen to this glucose? Is it going to get stored as glucose? The answer is no. We are going to, to store it as glycogen. That's why we're going to discuss, inshallah, the synthesis of glycogen. On the other hand, if I, ha if I need, if I don't have a supply of glucose and I need to get glucose as the first source of energy and I'm not going to get it through diet, I, I have another source for it, which is glycogen, the stored glycogen. So I need to break down this glycogen into its uh, uh, subunits or monomers, which are uh, glucose residues. So, uh, why does this happen? As I said, the, the first and most important source of energy is glucose. This is number one. Another thing, glucose is present in the blood, okay, as a solute. And it has several functions there. So I need to maintain its concentration in the blood. That's why, for example, when you eat a, a meal, your blood glucose is going to get up, okay? And then your insulin is get secreted to uptake this glucose into the cells, okay? But the level of glucose doesn't go to zero in, the, in your blood. It's going to get reduced to a level called fasting blood sugar, okay? And this level should be maintained all the time. If it goes down, this would cause coma. يعني بتسمعوا مرات مريض السكري مرض السكري بيقولوا صار عنده غيبوبة سكري نقص السكر. بيكون شو عامل؟ صاح الصبح بدي النوم أخذ الأنسولين تبعه وما أكل أي إشي. تمام؟ فشو بيصير؟ الأنسولين بينزل له السكر كتير أكتر من اللازم. بالتالي بصير في مستوى سكر قليل كتير في البلد فعشان هيك بفقد وعيه ليش بفقد وعيه because glucose is the main source of energy that brain relies on يعني brain cells rely on uh, تمام فال brain بيعتمد مين اللي على السكر لما بينزل عشان هيك بفقد الواحد وعيه تمام طيب do, where do we get this glucose or what are the sources of uh, uh, glucose in our blood the first source is diet as I said before, when you eat a diet, a, a meal, there is some sort of sugar inside it. Um, your uh, this sugar is going to get digested and absorbed. Um, it can be uptaken in different forms, whether polysaccharides like starch, 
um, monosaccharides, disaccharides, uh, glucose as yani, a monosaccharide. Um, and this depends on the amount of sugar that comes from this source is variable between individuals because of variabilities and di uh, differences in uh, diets. This is number one. The second source of blood glucose is uh, gluconeogenesis. Okay, Gluconeogenesis is the process of uh, glucose synthesis from other or uh, non-carbohydrate sources. Yani, I'm going to use molecules other than sugar, other than sugars, to produce glucose. Okay, uh, this uh, pathway is important whenever our um, uh, diet does not supply us with, with glucose. Whenever our glycogen stores are finished. Okay. Yani, and I store my excess glucose in the form of glycogen, and I'm going to break it down to get this glucose out of it. But once this amount is done, once is, this amount is finished, I need to rely on, or, or I, I need to find another way. This way is actually gluconeogenesis through using non carbohydrate sources. Okay? This response or this uh, pathway is relatively slow in response. Okay, so it does not give me a fast response and a fast reaction to the uh, decreased blood uh, sugar. So we rely on other uh, pathways, which is glycogen degradation, to uh, provide us with a rapid response and rapid supply of glucose to the blood. And this is actually the third source of uh, blood glucose, the glycogen molecules stored in glycogen stores. Glycogen is actually stored in, in all cells of our body, but it's mainly or it has the biggest stores in the liver and uh, muscles. Okay, but these stores are limited. Yani, um, they're not going to be an open source that doesn't finish. At some point, it's going to finish and we need to rely on gluconeogenesis to supply us with uh, a glucose as an important source of energy for brain specifically and brain mainly re relies on this uh, molecule lihul glucose not for example on fat or protein molecules uh, and also to maintain the concentration of sugar or glucose in the blood okay so let's just take uh, revise the uh, structure of glycogen molecule and glycogen, if you remember, is or the uh, it's, it's called a, a, an animal starch. يعني هو زي الستارش بس موجود في الانيمال سيل. This molecule is made of glucose residues that um, form a main chain, as you can see in here. This is the main chain in the middle, next to this uh, yellow ball. And from this main chain, branches come out. And there are so many layers of branches that reach like 13 layers, yeah, any branch and branch and branch, 13 times, okay? And the distances between these branches are relatively smaller in comparison to those uh, between uh, glucose residues in uh, starch, okay? So it's extensively uh, branched. It's a homopolysaccharide because it's just made of glucose. There are uh, no other uh, uh, monosaccharides. Structure and uh, it's made of a huge number of glucose residues that may reach uh, like hundreds of thousands. And uh, of the structure, the, the branching point is uh, of type alpha 1 6, whereas the linkages between the uh, sugar residues in the main chain and in the branches other than the branching point are alpha 1 6. The ends, who make the, the inlined balls like pinkish in color, these represent the non reducing end and they are non reducing because why they're considered as non reducing and not but not reducing. Anybody? The cream? Sorry. Ah. Yes. Yes, because the, the, these ends, or at these ends, 
the anomeric carbon is connected with the previous residue through uh, uh, with the previous uh, or the uh, carbon number four of the previous residue and the carbon that is free in the uh, at the ends is actually number four rather than rather than number one that's why we consider it as a non-reducing end okay but mumtaz Okay, again, this is just a uh, zoom in. Hello, uh, the glycogen. Uh, let's just focus on this one, the small one. Glycogen synthesis and uh, degradation is a relatively simple process, and it has to be simple. It has to contain um, uh, less steps than, for example, uh, uh, glycolysis or maybe gluconeogenesis, etc. Because remember. It's a fast responsive pathway. Yani we need these reactions to happen really quick and to and get to get the glucose uh, quickly and supply it to the um, blood and also to brain that needs it exclusively. So, like glycogen uh, degradation starts by removing one residue at a time. And we start this removal process at the ends, in human non-reducing end. These residu residues are not going to get released as glucose. They're going to get released and phosphorylated. And they are really uh, phosphorylated at carbon number one. That's why they're uh, released as glucose 1-phosphate. This glucose 1-phosphate can be uh, converted to glucose 6-phosphate and then glucose 6-phosphate can be dephosphorylated to glucose if this glucose is going to go into blood to supply or to maintain the uh, blood level, uh, blood glucose level. But if this glucose is going to get, uh, uh, for example, to be used for en for energy production, it can proceed in this process at this step, the glucose six phosphate. Okay. Five. The other pathway, which is glycogen uh, synthesis. Uh, starts with um, uh, or uses this type of residues in who will UDP glucose rather than glucose one phosphate. So we need to have this form of glucose in who UDP glucose and add it gradually one by one to um, a, a core glycogen protein, uh, 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 sorry, much protein, uh, a core glycogen molecule or uh, some sort of uh, um, uh, units on which uh, we build this molecule and then they're added and branched uh, in a sequential uh, and uh, gradual process to produce the huge and large molecule. The process will be discussed in a minute in, in details, but this is just to show you the difference or the main difference between glycogen synthesis and degradation. So they're both relatively short uh, pathways. Um, Glycogen in degradation is released in the form of glucose, uh, sorry, glucose is released from glycogen in the form of glucose 1-phosphate, whereas for synthesis, we need it in the form of UDP glucose to synthesize glycogen molecule. So what are the fates of this glucose that results and that is released from glycogen during degradation? So if this glycogen degradation happens in hepatocells or in liver cells, the produced glucose Okay, and we need to get to this point. We don't have to stay at the glucose 6-phosphate stage. We need to get it in the form of glucose dephosphorylation because this glucose is going to get released into the bloodstream to maintain blood sugar levels. Okay, if it stays as a blood, uh, glucose 6-phosphate, it's not going to leave because the transporter only transports glucose, does not transport glucose 6-phosphate. Okay, um, Whereas in the muscle, this glycogen is going to get into glucose 6-phosphate and can be used then to produce energy. So in the muscle, it's main, the main purpose of glycogen degradation is to produce energy, to use this glucose uh, as a source of energy. Whereas in the liver, it's the main uh, purpose of this process is to supply glucose to the blood to maintain blood glu fasting blood uh, glucose levels. Okay. So this is again to show you in the liver to maintain blood uh, glucose levels and in the muscle it's going to um, continue in glycolysis. Uh, the glucose 6-phosphate continues in glycolysis to be used um, as a source of energy and it may enter into anaerobic, re uh, uh, anaerobic 
um, uh, respiration in which lactate is produced and a small quick amount of energy uh, is released. How do we build these glycogen stores or how they are affected, whether we're talking about them in the liver or and muscle? And remember, glycogen is stored in all cells of our body, but the huge or the largest stores are present in the liver. There is around uh, like 100 grams of glucose stored in the liver and around 400 grams stored uh, of uh, glycogen stored in the, in the muscle. Liver glycogen... Uh, they're going to increase in the well-fed uh, state, okay? Uh, because we have a large supply of glucose, uh, increased secretion of insulin, increased uptake of glucose in the cells, and this glucose inside the cells is not going to stay as it is. If it's going to get into glycolysis or part of it gets into glycolysis to provide energy to the cells, but the other part is not going to, to, to be stored in the form of glucose. It's going to be used to synthesize glycogen and stored as glycogen. يعني أنا ما بخزن الجلوكوز على شكل جلوكوز. لازم أحوله لجلايكوجين وخزنه. إذا ما دام عندي كمية كبيرة أكثر من اللي أنا بحتاجه فعليا في الخلية فما راح يتخزن على شكل جلوكوز راح يتخزن على شكل جلايكوجين. Uh, once uh, we enter into fasting يعني لما نصوم فما في عندي supply there is no supply of sugars. آه طبعا الصيام لا يقصد به يعني بس الصيام الصيام الديني يعني خلينا نقول آه الصيام ممكن يكون مجرد انك في خلال اليوم يعني اخذت وجبه بعد ساعتين تمام بعد ساعتين هلا بنزل الشوجر للفاستنج بلاد ليفلز تمام فوي نيد تو مينتين ذس ليفل ما بدنا اياه ينزل عن هذا الشيء حتى ما تفقد وعيك او ما آه تدخل في حاله آه هايبوغلايسيميا يصير في ونقص في, في السكر يؤدي الى غياب آه عن الوعي فعشان هيك we need to supply this we need to supply this by degrading glycogen stores or, or glycogen that's present in glycogen stores of the uh, of the liver okay طيب نيجي ل الجلايكوجين that's present in the muscle this one is not going to get affected by short periods of fasting يعني حتى لو امتدت هاي الفاستنج لعدة أيام طبعا إحنا صياما دينيا يعني ما منصومش عدة أيام ورا بعض إلا بناكل بيناتهم فبالتالي بصير في عنا supply of, of, of carbohydrate but for example الناس اللي بيعيشوا في المجاعات الناس اللي آه اللي مثلا بيضربوا عن الطعام السجناء مثلا هدول الناس بتعرضوا للفاستنج لأيام طويلة شو اللي بصير في عندهم إنه أول شيء اللي بصير إنه بريك داون بسرعة أو depleted during fasting هو اللي هو liver glycogen then muscle gly glycogen starts to get used okay so if fasting is prolonged for longer time يعني خلينا نحكي weeks it starts to get affected and used uh, during this fasting okay عشان هيك بتصير تشوفوا انه الناس اللي زي هيك بيضربوا عن الطعام او ما بياكلوا فتره طويله بصير في هزال هيك وبتتناقص المسل ماس تبعهم بصير تصغر uh, مع الوقت uh, بسبب استهلاك يعني طبعا بداية رح يصير استهلاك للغلايكوجين بعدين رح يصير في استهلاك other types of molecules like الفات اللي هو الدهون بأشكال مختلفة رح نحكي عنها later on إن شاء الله okay. So how does glycogen degradation occur and where does it start? So just to orient you On the right side here, this is the main chain okay, and this is the beginning of the glycogen structure and towards the left side, this is again the main chain but this is the end for example Okay, this is the non-reducing end on the left. There is a branching point at alpha 1,6 upwards and the uh, residue upwards on the left had again non-reducing, another non-reducing end. The glycogen degradation is going to start at these non-reducing ends. يعني, I will, uh, for example, I'll see a molecule of the enzyme on this end breaking down or separating this molecule in the left. Uh, I'll see another molecule of the enzyme sitting on this residue and separating the non-reducing and etc. until we break down the whole structure of the glycogen. So it starts at the non-reducing ends, sorry, at the non-reducing ends towards the reducing ends. So let's see the, or let's discuss the uh, steps one by one and um, uh, involve the enzymes 
that are necessary for these for these reactions. So again, this is the main chain of glycogen. On the right side, this is the reducing end. On the left side, this uh, pale blue is the left as the uh, non-reducing end. So we start with an enzyme called glycogen phosphorylase. Phosphorylase, يعني بعمل removal. Lase هاي معناه إنه بشيل إشي. تمام؟ أو بحلل أو بكسر إشي. It's going to remove this residue and also phosphorylate it. فبطلع على شكل glucose one phosphate. Okay? So and this is the remaining glycogen molecule. So the process is going to get released on the new non-reducing end. Okay? So this is for the main chain. This is for a straight chain. What happens when, whenever we encounter branches? So the process is going to continue. This is the first blue residue removed. The second one removed. The third one removed. The fourth one removed. The fifth one removed. On this side, for example, one, two, three, it's on this branch, sorry. Uh, several residues were removed. But at some point, uh, for example, whenever we have one, two, three, four in the branch, whenever I have four residues in the branch, the uh, removal of these uh, glucose residues is going to stop. Yani it recognizes that there is a branch four residues away from here. So we would stop the degradation. Okay? This structure is called limited or limit dextrin. يعني بوقف عملية ال breakdown and separation and uh, cleavage of these uh, glucose residues. Then an enzyme اسمه transferase okay, is going to transfer this limit dextrin اللي هم ال three residues not all of them because this one the green one is connected to the chain via alpha 1-6 linkage and the enzyme that did the uh, um, the, the first step, the removal or breakdown of the alpha-1-4 linkages uh, is a different enzyme. But it's, it cannot be broken down by this enzyme. That's why we can take this limit dextrin, the homel 3 pink residues, separate them through a tra by a transferase enzyme, and transfer them to the other limit dextrin, or to the other branch, but now I have a longer branch, so the enzyme can st start again and break the uh, pink uh, residues one by one. These, these are alpha-1-4 linkages. So then we break by the, uh, by the phosphorylase, glycogen phosphorylase, one by one at the non-reducing end until we reach the limit dextrin. Limit dextrin should be seen here. It's going to get transferred to another branch or to the main chain, for example. So it can be broken one by one again by the phosphorylase. So what happens for the branching point where we have an alpha 1 6 linkage? We need to have another enzyme, a D branching enzyme. Okay. This D branching enzyme specifically. Uh, or has the two functions. The first transfer is that did the limit dextrin transfer process, and the second function, which is the alpha 1 6 glucosidase. Okay, alpha 1 6 glucosidase is the enzyme that breaks the alpha 1 6 linkage and releases the residue, the green residue that is uh, uh, at the branching point. Now I have my chain as a straight chain, there are no branches, so the phosphorylase can come again and break down these residues or cleave these residues one after one, okay? And release them in the form of glucose 1-phosphate. Tamam? Is an I want to phosphorylase one by one, but then I reach the point of limit dextrin. Limit dextrin is then I need a debranching enzyme that has two functions or two enzyme enzymatic functions. The first one is the transferase, which does the transfer of the limited dextrin to the core or to the main chain uh, and then the second one is the alpha-1-6 glucosidase that breaks the alpha-1-6 linkage as a debranching enzyme, okay? Then we have these alpha, sorry, we have the glucose-1-phosphate residues released. 
We need, as I said, to convert them into glucose 6 phosphate by phosphoglucomutase. It's an isomerase enzyme, as you remember, and this isomerase converts it to a form that can be used. So, for in the muscle, for example, it can be used right away into glycolysis and can be used to pre so it can pre be invested in the formation and um, synthesis of ATP molecules. But if, as I said before, if we need it to maintain blood sugar level, we need to dephosphorylate it, okay, by a phosphatase, removal of this phosphate group, and releasing or transporting uh, glucose via glucose transporters to the blood stream. Okay. There is a minor pathway in which glycogen can be degraded inside the lysosomes of, of the cells, and probably you've discussed this in the cell biology course, I'm not sure. Um, and this small amount it constitutes only like 1 to 3 percent of glycogen that is present. The enzyme that's present inside, inside the lysosome is called alpha-1,4 glucosidase. Okay, alpha-1,4, not alpha-1,6 as we see in, in the debranching enzyme. This alpha-1,4 glucosidase breaks the alpha-1,4 uh, linkages and uh, produce uh, glucose residues. Um, but the, the purpose of this pathway is unknown. It's not the one that provides this glucose for energy or for maintenance of blood sugar. Uh, and um, uh, this uh, enzyme is associated with a disease that we'll discuss, inshallah, uh, uh, later on. Uh, if the enzyme alpha-1,4 glucosidase is deficient due to genetic mutation, this would result in the accumulation of glycogen inside the lysosome, forming vacuoles inside the lysosomal structure that we can see under the microscope, and this results in a disease called uh, type 2 Pompeii uh, disease. Let's now discuss the other pathway in here, glycogen synthesis. So uh, whenever I have, uh, whenever I have a large amount of sugar uh, inside my cells, transported through the transporters, in effect or after the release of insulin, okay? So this high amount or this large concentration of glucose is going to get stored in the form of glycogen because remember, Glucose cannot be stored as glucose. It can be stored just as uh, glycogen. So glycogen can be uh, synthesized by adding these glucose residues one by one. And remember, they are added in a different format. They're added as UDP uh, glucose. Okay, this process is called glycogenesis. Okay, glycogenesis. The first process of glycogen degradation is called glycogenolysis. Glycogeno lysis breakdown of glycogen and this one glycogenesis yani formation of glycogen so, so this is again the uh, udp glucose so this is the glucose residue with the phosphate on carbon number one this is the uh, uridine diphosphate so this is the uh, nitrogenous base this is the sugar ribose sugar and this is the phosphate. Okay. Again, this is just to show you the structure. So how does this UDP glucose form? It's going to form by interaction between glucose 1-phosphate and UTP molecule. UTP has three phosphates and glucose 1-phosphate has one phosphate. So in total, we have four phosphates. What, happened, uh, what happens during this reaction that is catalyzed by UDP, glucose pyrophosphorylase, is this is the glucose and the phosphate is going to stay on it on carbon number one. We're going to take just one of the phosphates of UTP, okay, and this is the ribose again, and this is the nitrogenous base, and two phosphates are going to get released as pyrophosphate. Now I would have it as uridine diphosphate glucose. So we consider like this uh, phosphate is part of the uh, nucleotide. So UDP glucose. The name of the enzyme, remember UDP glucose, pyrophosphorylase, because it's going to remove these uh, phosphates in the form of pyrophosphate. Let's discuss the reactions of this pathway. So we start, as you remember, with um, 
glucose one phosphate okay glucose one phosphate that may come from glucose six phosphate so we may uh, for example, the, the glucose that entered into the cell, it might be phosphorylated as glucose 6-phosphate for the purpose of degradation, and then they found, uh, the cell may find that there is an excess. I don't need to degrade it through glycolysis, so let's just store it in the form of glycogen. So how does this, uh, this uh, is going to proceed? By conversion or by uh, the action of phosphoglucomutase that converts or isomerizes the glucose 6-phosphate to become glucose 1-phosphate. Now this glucose 1-phosphate again interacts with the UTP molecule to produce UDP glucose and release pyrophosphate, okay? The enzyme again is UDP glucose pyrophosphorylase. Now I have the unit that I can be added and can be used. So how can I start the reactions? Are, uh, am I going to start with the residue number 1 and then add number 2, 3, etc.? What happens is actually is different. I need to have um, uh, like a platform or I need to have a reference on which or a base on which I build my glycogen molecule. This can be either a glycogen fragment, يعني بقايا شوية من هالglycogen فيها شوية uh, residues or I can use glycogen in molecule. So these are called, uh, considered as primers يعني حتى يقدروا بيلشوا لي reactions. تمام؟ فالبرايمر can be either glycogenin or glycogen uh, fragment. Uh, the glycogenin, طبعا glycogen fragment مفهومي, I have the residues and I can add more residues uh, to it. But for glycogenin, this molecule contains tyrosine amino acid. And tyrosine, if you remember, has an OH group in its side chain. So it can interact through the oxygen of this OH group with the coming or incoming UDP glucose. Um, the UDP glucose is going to lose the UDP molecule and just glucose is going to get attached to the oxygen of this tyrosine or to the uh, uh, glycogen uh, fragment. The reaction is catalyzed by glycogen synthase enzyme, glycogen synthase, and again the process is repeated several times by UDP glucose added again, UDP is released and glucose is added, etc. until we form this long chain of uh, glucose residues connected via alpha-1-4 linkage. So this is now the elongation phase where we increase the number of residues along the main chain of glycogen. Now I have just a straight chain. I don't have branches. So we would start the second phase in this uh, synthetic process where we need a branching enzyme. The enzyme or the branching enzyme is called 4-6 transferase because it's going to act, catalyze the formation of alpha-1-6 linkages. So we start with this branch, for example, formation of uh, alpha-1-6 linkage with between this residue and residue K, for example, and then we need back glycogen synthase to add the residues in the branch. So just the branching enzyme is just responsible for uh, the formation of the alpha-1-6 bond at the branching point, and then I need glycogen synthase again to continue the elongation of the uh, branch itself. Okay, so further elongation uh, is, is, um, is performed along the path to, el to increase the number of residues in the different branches. Do we also do or repeat branching several times because remember, um, uh, glycogen molecules are uh, branched several times. They're branched like 13 layers of branches. So we need to repeat this time, uh, this branching uh, so many times until we reach to the final structure uh, and uh, complicated and extensively branched structure of uh, glycogen. Let's discuss some clinical applications on glycogen metabolism and we'll take a group of glycogen storage diseases. These are genetic diseases, so they have, we have to have a mutation that affects the metabolism of glycogen, whether it is synthesis or uh, degradation. Um, uh, this genetic mutation uh, results in a deficiency in a certain enzyme, okay? Uh, and this would result in the uh, change, change, sorry, changes in the structure of glycogen 
uh, so abnormal structure of glycogen or abnormal synthetic process of glycogen uh, or uh, problems in degradation for example etc so there would be accumulation of glycogen at the end whether it's normal or abnormal in structure and this would uh, result in these different uh, diseases and since they are genetic so they would appear early in life and uh, uh, some of them might be uh, severe to the point of uh, causing uh, or causing death in early infancy and others might be just mild that they and they can uh, live with them uh, this example, uh, glucose 6 phosphatase def uh, deficiency or von Gerg disease. So, what's the importance of this um, or what happens during this disease? The enzyme deficiency is glucose 6 phosphatase. What does this mean? Dr. بما انه جلوكوز 6 فوسفاتيز فالجلوكوز 6 هو السبستريت والفوسفاتيز هو انه بيشيل الفوسفات من الجلوكوز فالمشكله هان المشكله هان انه الجلوكوز 6 لما لما يصير البريك داون للجلوكوز من من الجلايكوجين في في المصل الجلوكوز 6 فوسفات ما بيكون قادر على انه يشيل الفوسفات من الفوسفات من الجلوكوز تمام طيب شو بترتب عليه؟ فال الجلوكوز اللي بدخل على الليفر بيكون غير قادر انه يطلع. واحنا قلنا انه الجلوكوز اهميته اللي بالليفر بيكون اهميته انه بيعدل الفاستنج جلوكوز ليفل. اوكي يعني جزء كبير منها صحيح بس شوي خربطت في المواقع تمام ممتاز هلا if we have glucose 6 phosphatase deficiency يعني which reaction is affected؟ هي the conversion of glucose 6 phosphate into glucose تمام where does this happen زي ما شفنا قبل شوي حكينا انه it may happen during glycogen breakdown in uh, in, in liver rather than muscle حكينا انه muscle it's going the glycogen degradation is going to reach glucose 6 phosphate then this glucose 6 phosphate enters glycolysis فانا ما راح اوصل لمرحلة الجلوكوز because we don't rely on muscle glycogen to supply blood glucose تمام هي بتحتاجه الها داخليا يعني فما راح يطلع ما في ما في مشكلة في المصل المشكلة وين؟ is in the liver because in the, the, the liver is the main source of blood sugar تمام and we're going to reach the point of glucose 6 phosphate and we cannot continue until we produce glucose glucose 6 phosphate cannot exit liver to the blood فبضله وين محجوز؟ بضله في uh, الليفر تمام هذا الاشي is going to activate the hepatocytes to break down the glycogen لانه رح تضلها تيجي المسج من البلاد انه احنا ما عندي شوغر كفايه بدي شوغر تمام فبناء عليه ممكن يصير في هيباتوميجلي فاتي ليفر الجلايكوجين ان تيرمز اوف ستراكشر اتس از نورمال دزنت هاف تو دو اني ثينج وذ ستراكشر اوف جلايكوجين اند ذس وود ريزلت ان سيفير فاستنج هايبوجلايسيميا فبينزل السكر تبع البلد كثير لما بتكون في حالة فاستنج مدام ما في شوغر من الدايت معناته عندنا حالة فاستنج ورح ينزل كثير بسبب انه الليفر is unable to provide uh, glucose to the blood stream this would also result in growth retardation they remember this is a genetic disease starts in early, in early stage of life ف, uh, and this is a fast source the glycogen is a fast source of glucose so there would be some growth uh, retardation Another disease اللي هو muscle glycogen phosphorylase deficiency okay. أو بسمو uh, McCardell syndrome هلا اسمه muscle glycogen phosphorylase يعني it's only in the glycogen phosphorylase of the muscle <coughs> sorry طيب معناته only muscles are affected تمام <coughs> sorry again طيب شو بيصير في هالحالة؟ حكينا إنه إحنا الجلايكوجين is a quick source of glucose specifically in muscles because they repair, يعني, um, rely on it as a quick source and <coughs> sorry 
and muscles are going to use this the glucose released from glycogen for their own use ما بيطلع لا للبلد ولا لغيرهم بيستخدمهم لهم وخصوصا في حالة لما بيكون they're they're exercising فبالتالي شو اللي بيصير عندهم there would be weakness of the muscle cramping of the muscle because there is not enough fast source of energy uh, to provide these uh, exercising and uh, muscles that need large amount of energy okay فبالتالي زي ما حكينا وي ماي في النورمال سيتويشن بنستخدم هذا الجلوكوز بيدخل حتى في الانيروبيك ريسبيريشن وبصير في برودكشن اوف لاكتيت سو ذير وود بي نو انكريز اوف لاكتيت برودكشن ان ذيز ماسلز ديورينج اكسرسايز لانه اصلا انا uh, يعني uh, ما بقدر اكسر الجلايكوجين uh, بشكل افشنت uh, في هدول العضلات تمام او في الماسلز تذكروا جلايكوجين فوسفوريليز شو بيعمل؟ بكسر الجلايكوجين انتو جلوكوز 1 فوسفيت بكسر وبيعمل فوسفوريليشن بنفس الوقت فانا ما راح اقدر اكسر الجلايكوجين اللي موجود عندي في المسلز حكينا انه الستورج حتى الستورز اوف جلايكوجين ان ذا مسل ار ماتش لارجر ان تيرمز اوف اماونت مقارنه بالليفر انذر ديزيز اللي هو حكينا عنه هيك بريفلي قبل شوي اللايسوسومال ستورج ديزيز اللي هو الديفشنسي اوف الفا 1 فور جلوكوسيديز ذاتس بريزنت ان ذا لايسوسوم ريزلتنج ان بومبي ديزيز فبصير في زي ما حكينا ديجريديشن ذا ديجريديشن اوف لايسوسومال جلايكوجين از انهبيتد ديو تو ذيس ديفشنسي فذير وود بي اكيوليشن اوف ذا جلايكوجين Uh, in the lysosomes resulting in the formation of vacuoles in the lysosomes um, شو بيصير فيهم او يعني هذه اللايسوسومز uh, او هاي العملية شو رح تأثر اكتر شو رح تأثر على الليفر والمصل والهارت فعشان هيك بيصير في عندهم ماسف كارديو ميجالي او تضخم بالقلب الجلايكوجين uh, in terms of structure is normal Uh, in terms of blood sugar, راح يكون عندهم normal because the glycogen that is stored in the liver and it's the main source of blood glucose uh, is going to be normal and its degradation is going to be normal as well. لكن uh, they may die early in life due to heart failure. Failure. Cardiomegaly لما يصير في تضخم في القلب معناته وكأنك القلب مجهد وعاد عم بيحاول إنه ينجز function uh, وبيقاوم هذا الإشي لكن at some point it may fail. تمام؟ و resulting in uh, in death. هون عم بفرجينا بال uh, بالرسمة بس the position of these diseases هاي هون مثلاً Pompe disease بحكي عن the degradation specifically in the lysosome and how it's going to result in these oh, sorry in these different um, uh, signs and symptoms. Um, this is also the myocardial disease. حكينا عنها قبل شوي that affects glycogen phosphorylase so there would be in the muscle specifically uh, skeletal muscle طبعا specifically so there would be no degradation of glycogen in these muscles so the muscles get fatigued uh, oh sorry they get uh, cramped or, or no, prov uh, no response to the, the high need of energy uh, during exercise okay let's now talk about ال energy requirement for this process. خلينا نمشي مع ال glycogen synthesis. It's a synthetic process. يعني I expect to need energy. صح? It's a anabolic process. عملية تصنيع وبناء. فبالتالي بتوقع أنها بتحتاج الطاقة. هلا نرجع نذكر ال reactions ونجمعهم مع بعض ونشوف ال net reaction and how much energy was used. And remember, I have uh, the first step, glucose with ATP to become glucose 6-phosphate and ADP. تمام? This is a glycolysis. But then glucose 6-phosphate becomes glucose 1-phosphate, isomerization. And then glucose 1-phosphate plus, yes, uh, and UTP to become UDP glucose, that pyrophosphate, UDP glucose, ma the glycogen, تمام؟ ال UDP ال الجلوكوز بيطلع ال UDP بضل عندي الجلايكوجين زاد 1 ريزيديو كان عندي N ريزيديوز and now I have N plus 1 طيب خلينا نجمع جلوكوز 6 فوسفيت راحت مع جلوكوز 6 فوسفيت ال 1 فوسفيت كمان مع ال 1 فوسفيت UDP جلوكوز with UDP جلوكوز طبعا هون نسينا ال reaction هذا الصغير اللي هو pyrophosphate with H2O بيعطينا 2 inorganic phosphates فالpyrophosphate with pyrophosphate etc خلينا نجمع 
This is the glucose we started with. مع ATP استهلكنا أول واحد مع ال UTP هون. Okay. عشان نعمل ال unit for uh, that we need for glycogen synthesis. And then we have our glycogen with n number of residues. بعدين طلع عندي هون 1 ADP و 1 UDP و 2 inorganic phosphates و glycogen with N plus 1 residues تمام؟ فإذا أنا استهلكت 1 ATP molecule and 1 UTP molecule amount of energy in UTP is يعني close to that in ATP خلينا سوري خليني اوبس سوري خليني اجمع او اشوف ال degradation and synthesis فاحنا عندنا ال synthesis كان عندي جلوكوز فوسفيت وزدت له ال UTP عشان يصير UDP جلوكوز طلع ال pyrophosphate pyrophosphate with H2O2 inorganic phosphate UDP جلوكوز with glycogen اللي هو جمعناه قبل شوي شفناه قبل شوي ف this is جلوكوز 1 فوسفيت with UTP يعني we ignored the first step اللي هي phosphorylation with glycogen and we released UDP and glycogen N plus 1 كمان طبعا 2 in organic phosphates هلأ degradation we started with glycogen with N number تمام شو عملنا احنا احنا طلعناهم 1 glucose بس على شكل ايش glucose 1 phosphate ف with N organic phosphate Glycogen N minus one, and this is glucose one phosphate. Okay. فا تقريبا وكأني أنا أم يعني reversing the pathway. بس طبعا with some different details. يعني هون بديت في glucose one phosphate هون انتهيت ب glucose one phosphate. Okay. اللي فرق عندي في the synthesis اللي هو the need for UTP. فا this way we can also distinguish يعني بهاي الطريقة أنا بقدر أميز أو the cell can distinguish whether this glucose one phosphate is going into the to to interact with UTP to become UDP glucose and be used in the synthesis or it's going to be isomerized to become glucose six phosphate or and then can be used to provide energy بالعكس يعني زي ما بيصير في حالات degradation okay فلازم يكون في فرق في اليونت اللي بستخدمها في السينثيسز اند ديجريديشن سو وي دونت يعني ويست ذا انرجي اوف ذا سيل ما تعرفش هي بدها تروح في السينثيسز ولا تروح بالديجريديشن ذس واي وي كان ديستينجوش ليتس توك اباوت ذا هرمونال ريجوليشن اوف ذا باث واي ام ستارتنج وذ يعني اور ذا امبورتنت Uh, hormone that regulates glycogen metabolism is glucagon. Why are we focusing on glucagon in this example? Because whenever I start to break down glycogen, this means in no ish, in ana, I'm in a fasting condition. There's no supply of sugar from diet, so mostly I'm going to break the glucose and use the glucose. Rather than synthesizing or getting this glucose, فعشان هيك هلا الأكتيف عنا الجلوكاجون. هاي الجلوكاجون if you remember is going to bind to a G protein coupled receptor. For example, if it binds to that on the liver, زي ما حكينا بصير في there's there would be activation of the G protein by binding to GTP exchange يعني with FGDP with GTP. Now I have the alpha subunit bound to GTP and active. It would be sequestered or separated from the beta gamma complex. But then there would be activation of the adenylyl cyclase to convert ATP to cyclic AMP second messenger. Okay. So now I have the second messenger cyclic AMP that's going to activate protein kinase A. It binds to protein kinase A now like this. So it becomes in the active form. طيب ال activation involves the separation of the C, اللي هي the catalytic subunits of the protein kinase A, so they can phosphorylate many targets. Of these targets, mean, so glycogen phosphorylase kinase B. Okay, glycogen phosphorylase kinase. يعني this is the kinase that phosphorylates glycogen phosphorylase. Okay, طيب. Hello. Now this one is phosphorylated, so it becomes active. 
فشو رح تعمل؟ it's going to phosphorylate glycogen phosphorylase. Once glycogen phosphorylase is uh, is phosphorylated, it's active. Okay, يعني هدول الإنزيمز التنين glycogen phosphorylase kinase and glycogen phosphorylase are activated by phosphorylation. وبنعرف إنه glycogen phosphorylase phosphorylase once active, glycogen degradation is activated. Okay. طيب. Same thing would happen مع مين؟ يعني نفس الباثوي نفس الآلية would happen when epinephrine is released. The epinephrine اللي هو طبعا if it, it, it's released as a hormone احنا بنحكي هون rather than as a neurotransmitter in the muscle or liver it's going to bind to again the receptor G protein coupled receptor activating G protein alpha subunit and again activating the protein kinase A resulting in the same sequence of events that results in activation of glycogen phosphorylase and glycogen degradation. Okay? هلأ whenever أو how can we stop the, this action يعني مثلا أنا هلأ كسرت الجلوكوز بعدين في الفاستنج عشان to maintain for example blood sugar uh, levels or uh, to provide energy for glucose for, uh, as a source of energy for muscle but إيش رجعت أنا I took another meal أخذت وجبة تانية I broke the cycle and now I need to relax to store I'll stop the degradation of glycogen because I have a supply of glucose. I don't need to degrade it anymore. So I need to stop all these reactions. How does this happen? So definitely after the uh, carbohydrate-rich meal, insulin is going to get released, more uptake of the sugar. This insulin binds to its receptor, uh, on, receptor tyrosine kinase, and the, this binding is going to activate its signaling pathway and activating an enzyme called phosphodiesterase. Phosphodiesterase degrades the second messenger cyclic AMP to 5 prime AMP, so it's inactive anymore. It does not activate this cycle of events, so there would be inactivation of the uh, of glycogen degradation or inhibition of glycogen degradation. So Another way where it acts, uh, where the insulin acts, it also activates here protein phosphatase. Protein phosphatase removes phosphate from uh, uh, glycogen phosphorylase kinase yeah. and from glycogen phosphorylase so they become or oh, both of them become inactive so glycogen degradation is inhibited this way okay Oops. Uh, let's talk about glycogen synthesis okay so this is again uh, glycogen synthesis is activated okay whenever we have high amount of sugar uptaken underneath or due to the secretion of uh, insulin uptake by the cells and uh, a, a, the concentration inside the cells increases and a part of it is going to get to be used for production of energy or part of it should be here is going to be used for glycogen synthesis تمام طيب خلينا نشوف شو اللي بترتب على هذا الكلام هلا حكينا احنا قبل شوي ان الجلوكاجون ابينفرين اتسترا دي اكتيفيت هذا طبعا مش under the well-fed state. I'm talking about the other condition. They activate the G protein coupled receptor. They activate the cyclic AMP formation. CAMP activates protein kinase A. Protein kinase A is going to phosphorylate glycogen synthase. يعني of the targets of protein kinase A, they have glycogen synthase. Glycogen synthase, once phosphorylated, it's inactive. يعني بعكس اللي شفناه قبل شوية بالdegradation. شفنا glycogen phosphorylase kinase, glycogen phosphorylase, once phosphorylated, they are, act they are activated. Now, if this is the situation where phosphorylation happens, معناته إيش? They become inactive. معناته this would inhibit glycogen synthesis. That's why... يعني under uh, fasting conditions where glucagon concentration is high and where we would have high concentration also of epinephrine, glycogen synthesis is inhibited and that makes sense. 
يعني glycogen degradation is active but glycogen synthesis is inhibited يعني ما بصير أنشط عمليتين بعكس بعض في نفس الوقت هلا لما يصير بالعكس الحالة اللي حكيت لكم عنها قبل شوي الويل فيد ستيت أكلت لك وجبة ارتفع السكر ارتفع الانسولين there is more uptake into the cells هلا شو اللي بيصير إنه الانسولين بيرتبط بالريسبتور تبعه again on the cell membrane نفس الإشي بالليفر بالمصل إلى آخره and it's going to activate protein phosphatase Protein phosphatase, by the way, is going to remove this phosphate from glycogen synthesis, so it becomes active, and glycogen synthesis is activated. بهال حال تمام. نفس الوقت كمان الجلاكوج ال ال insulin زي ما حكينا قبل شوي is going to inhibit the is going to activate the phosphodiesterase to break the cyclic AMP, so it does not, يعني do this inhibition process. زي ما شفنا هاي. اللي هون موجودة بهذا الفيجر ونفس الكلام إذا بدنا نرجع لعملية الديجراديشن قبل شوي الانسولين is going to de-phosphorylate الجلايكوجين فوسفوريليز كاينيز and glycogen phosphorylase فشو بصير أو شو بترتب عليها إنه بصير لهم عملية inactivation and there is no more degradation of glycogen but there is activation of glycogen synthesis طيب بدي أكتفي اليوم بنكمل إن شاء الله المرة القادمة عن الألوستيرك ريجوليشن والهرمون ريجوليشن بنتابع فيه إشي بسيط اللي ضايل بالجلايكوجين ميتابوليزم ففور توداي ذاتس إناف عشان ناخد أسئلة كل معنا مجال ناخد أسئلة إن شاء الله تعالى طيب let's go back